Cognitive explanations of personality are not direct applications of cognitive science. Cognitive science studies sensation, perception, memory, learning, and information processing. It describes the way people acquire and process data and make sense of the world. It uses terms like schemas and scripts to describe how people organize and access rules of behavior. Neither Beck or Ellis are cognitive scientists. They're only cognitive when compared to other approaches. Beck's use of schema is more like Piaget. It's a broad interpretation. And Ellis is more like Aristotle than he is to modern cognitive science. But compared to Freud, Skinner, or Rogers, Beck and Ellis are both cognitive. They both emphasize logical thinking. Aaron Beck combined Rogers and Freud to create cognitive therapy. From Rogers, he takes the importance of developing a relationship with the client, and Rogers' emphasis on phenomenology, how you see the world. From Freud, Beck takes the importance of treating severe conditions, the value of a good medical education, Beck got his MD from Yale, and the great impact that internal processing has on external behavior. But instead of Freudian conflicts, the heart of Beck's approach is the impact of beliefs on behavior. What we believe impacts what we do. Just as our perceptual processes can be distorted, our thinking can be biased. Thinking means to build mental representations of ourselves, of others, and of the world around us. If these mental models are unbiased, we can cope and deal with reality. But if we have an internal representation of ourselves that is hopeless or unlovable, that cognitive bias will impact our behavior. We can make ourselves miserable by overgeneralizing a bad day as, All life is bad! We might magnify a small issue into a big issue, make everything about us, or jump to conclusions before we have any evidence. All these are problems of thinking. Beck's approach, then, is to fix behavior by fixing the thinking and its underlying assumptions. These assumptions are called schemas. They are assumptions about how the world operates. They are values we generate. We decide whether we are good, whether others can be trusted, and whether the world is neutral, on our side, or against us. Some of these schemas are general, but many are specific to our experience and unique to us. We might have a general rule about life, be kind to others, and a very specific rule of how to act at home. Never ask for advice from your mother unless you want to be criticized. Schema and values are interchangeable. Values are super schemas or super rules. A schema influences some behavior, but values influence a lot of behaviors. If these core values are healthy, they're beneficial to us. But if our core beliefs are based on distortions of reality, we will systematically make errors of reasoning throughout our lives. If our belief is that we are incapable of making good decisions, this cognitive bias will result in our being indecisive. Similarly, if we believe we are incompetent, we might expect failure and try to get other people to run our lives for us. If we believe we can't make it through life without help, we might overvalue our relationships. The good news is that our personality is not fixed. For Beck, we are what we think. We construct our view of the world from our past experiences and internal processes. If our past twists our thinking, our challenge is to untwist it. To make our lives better, Beck suggests we identify our assumptions. The next step is to test their reality. We straighten out our thinking by doing reality checks. For Beck, thinking and doing are closely tied. Systematic cognitive distortions don't really matter if they don't show up in behavior. So he teaches people to identify their dichotomous thinking. It has to be this or that, and nothing in between. But Beck says that learning the distinction is of little value unless it produces a change of behavior.